So today we are going to look into a new topic, uh, which is Nagios. So Nagios is uh, a server, monitoring server rather. The whole architecture is based on server client, uh, server client kind of architecture where the server would be responsible for uh, gathering the data from the clients as well as sending them commands which has to be executed on the client side. Client side uh, would be running a daemon called NRP which is Nagios remote plugin executor and based on the uh, commands that are received from the server side NRP would be executing um, exact same scripts on the client side and based on what the script is returning whether it is 0 1 2 3 or any other uh, error code if it is returning such values on basis of that Nagios should be able to figure out what is the state of uh, that particular node so let's say uh, for example there is a cpu uh, measuring script so cpu cycles measuring script that you have written and that script would return zero uh, when success that means nothing to worry about one means uh, there is some uh, problem with that that means it's a warning sign um, two means the load is critical now so you should have immediate attention paid to that machine or particular node if it is three on and onwards that means there is some unrecognizable error that script is going through you need to fix it as soon as possible okay so there are different uh, kinds of error messages that uh, Nigeria would be understanding apart from these error messages if any of the other error messages would be coming that means three or more uh, if that's the status, status code in that case Nigeria is not able to figure out what's happened to the script and it uh, says that the script is malfunctioning or it is not properly set up and you need to check it out so it's very simple one centralized server would be responsible for handling all of these things so we are going to set up Nagio server so these systems uh, I would also call them as support systems like we have installed DNS DHCP so these systems do not play a direct role in the code movement okay so the build and release pipeline uh, is responsible for moving the code from the developer machines to the production end eventually but these systems like dns is there dhcp is there your firewalls are there uh, then you uh, set up the uh, security parameters you set up the monitoring you set up logging centralized logging and Azure servers and all those things these are just support systems that helps us uh, do our job better okay they do not impact the code directly so Nigeria servers would be there rather in our case we are going to set up Nigeria server to one instance and there would be different machines so either it could be nodes it could be your continuous integration server it could be your configuration management server okay and Azure server would be issuing the commands to them okay at the same time the nodes would be sending back the data the daemons that execute on the nodes NRPE now, NRP is Nagios remote plugin executor so from the name you could uh, make out that uh, NRP would be executing the plugins on the client side very simple and which plugins the names of these plugins have to be mentioned at the Nagios server so one more thing to remember here that any plugin that you want to uh, run on the client side the plugin has to be there and all the plugins essentially are just shell scripts most probably they are shell scripts uh, other languages can also be executed based on how you write them of course in uh, bash if, if you are generating a file then in that file you would be writing something like uh, shebang line right if you have to execute it using bash then you'd be writing bin bash if you want to execute it using Python you would be writing something like this shebang line would change it would be uh, user bin environment and set the environment to Python okay so using Python language so in your bash script also you could simply write your Python scripts so I could uh, write something like this in that particular file 
instead of echo hello world we could write print hello world but make sure that the shebang line says that the things that are following in this particular file should be executed using python well so if you understood this is a very normal client server kind of architecture that nagios would follow you would be installing nagios on our servers and trying to configure that all right so here it is i need my dns to be up nagios we would be creating one i would call it nagios and the existing machines that we have or maybe i create another one just for uh, monitoring purposes we would be setting up not just clients on it things are pretty much straightforward um before installing nagios you need to make sure that lamp packages are installed that means it should be having apache mysql and php running for supporting the dashboard and uh, having the database set up that tagios uses for storing the data well that is not a prerequisite rather it's not mandatory uh, because if you install nagios using a package in that case you wouldn't require lamp packages to be installed uh, but just for sake of completeness i would be installing that another one is that um, if you want to install the latest version version of nagios which is nagios 4 uh, which unfortunately doesn't doesn't bundle up for ubuntu packages so in that case you'll have to build from source and they would be providing the steps that you need to follow i'm starting this machine and we need one more which i would be calling as nagios client so every machine that you want to monitor is going to be a nagios client and you will have to repeat same number of steps on it or rather um on the uh, template itself the base template itself what you could do is you could set up uh, the base template as nagios client okay and every machine you create would automatically take care of setting it its uh, setting up itself the different parts have to be taken care of of course so chef recipes can help you there or puppet manifest can help you there because on every machine the host names are going to be different okay that's the only different part otherwise everything runs just fine we are here on the server side of nagios and the package that comes for ubuntu is nagios 3 instead of nagios 4 so we are using ubuntu 14.04 lts version and for that version uh, nagios provides its latest package nagios 3 which is still in uh, uh, under service okay so these people haven't uh, got read of any of the support on it it's uh, still in long term support and it would support it till 2018 i guess so you'd be using the same so first thing we need to have lamp package installed so lamp doesn't uh, come in one single package although uh, some people are providing a package uh, which would be helping you to um, set up all these three things that means apache mysql and php but i prefer it to do it uh, on my own that means uh, manually the reason for that is we might need very specific versions of apache mysql and php generally it's more critical on mysql and php side where the applications would need a few um, features which are present in the higher versions of php but as uh, it uh, demands more stability as well so we would be interacting with uh, the older version of mysql so for that kind of stuff i'm installing mysql i'm get update the regular one and then need to install mysql server and client so the packages are very simple it is mysql server and mysql client hyphens in between
so it's done let's install the package package is apt-get install mysql server and mysql client okay it would automatically download the uh, the version that is meant for ubuntu 14.04 lts MySQL asks for uh, the root passwords to be set up set it up to be empty password for now or if you know what you're doing and um, you want to configure it securely in that case you should be providing your own passwords So I'm providing an empty password, just hitting enter. Similarly, when we install Nagios, Nagios would be asking us for admin password. So provide the admin password that you would be remembering. So we have installed Nagios, uh, sorry, uh, the MySQL. The next part is to install Apache. Uh, get install Apache 2. We've done it multiple times, right? And the third package is PHP. So uh, for installing PHP, we need two packages rather. One is PHP compiler. Another one is a library that helps us to connect PHP with Apache. Okay, installing PHP. So latest version PHP 5, lib apache 2 mod PHP, mod PHP 5 for interacting with PHP. Apache PHP interaction is provided by mod PHP. So that would be last step in the LAMP package, LAMP stack. We already have got uh, Linux, of course. So once that's done, we should be able to test the PHP and it should show um, Nagios as a result. So what I'll do is, um, I'll jump to the folder where the default Home page is kept. CD var www html index.html. I'm creating one more file called info.php. Since we have just installed PHP, I would like to check whether it works or not. PHP info is a command that gives you all the detailed information about PHP installation and its environment. So save it. We are going to connect to this 
machine um, via browser. Fifty six dot uh, seventy one to show default Apache page, right? And if I hit another page that we have just created, info.php, it should show detailed PHP information. Along with that, there should be a one section which talks about MySQL. Okay, so MySQL drivers are all installed. So great, uh, LAMP stack is now installed. The next step is to set up Nigeo server part. So on the server itself, you'd be installing packages for Nigeos. The packages are, I'm getting installed, Nigeos. And the Nagios NRPE plugin. Okay, so this is on the server side. On the client side, it is going to be a different one. So Nagios 3 uh, for setting up the Nagios daemons and servers. Uh, Nagios NRPE plugin to talk to the NRPE executor on the client side. The actual scripts should always be kept on the client side, so we would be installing yet another plugin which is called Nagios plugin on the client side so that it downloads all the default uh, check scripts which are present with Nagios. You could easily use any one of them. While installing it would ask us for some username and password and um, some notification settings if you already have got um, send mail configured or maybe you are using some external mail configuration for sending mails you'll have to set up there when the Nagios asks for uh, those things Okay, so I'm uh, not configuring any of the mail uh, setup right now. If you are working with the Gmail uh, mail notifications, go with internet site. Okay, uh, then there is local host for practicing purposes for satellite system. There would be some configurations which are provided by uh, these systems. So you will have to fill it in. Web administration password, I would be giving my own. The username is going to be Nagios Admin. Since we want Nagios to be uh, provided as an interface, uh, we have installed Apache there, right? And uh, we need to make sure that Apache is allowed to write to Nagios folders. For that, I'll have to change the ownership and the permissions. 
so I would say user mod or change the user and add the Apache user to the NetGIS group. User mod minus A, it's sorry, it's minus G. Sorry for that. It's minus A minus G, and I just www hyphen data. And then change the permissions, provide execute permissions on var lib Nagios, where all the Nagios binaries are kept. Nagios 3. Okay. All set. Uh, we have added the user to the Nagios group and change the permissions on the folder Nagios 3 which contains the binaries for Nagios execution. Next thing we want to enable executions of plugins. Okay, so I'll have to change a file called etc Nagios 3 inside that there is a file called Nagios.cfg etc Nagios 3 slash Nagios.cfg is the file name and we are going to change a line that says check external commands which would be set up to zero currently we'll have to make it one here it is this is on line number 145 okay so this is also required when we are going to set up our own custom uh, script and we would be writing our own commands for that so Nigerians uh, sh should check for external uh, commands as well. So that's what it means. So next thing we are going to do is to restart Nigerians service. Nigerians three restart. Okay. So once that is done, we should be able to see Nigerians running on this uh, browser. Config 56.71. So I would be accessing that dot seven one slash Nagios 3. So it's asking for authentication. Authenticate yourself. The uh, username is going to be Nagios admin. The password, the same password that you have provided while installing Nagios packages. And this is the default home page for Nagios. So there are multiple sections on the left hand side. Uh, there would be hosts present, there would be services present, there would be uh, the, the problems that are there okay so all of them so currently there is just one host configured which is localhost Nigeria server itself services that are running on that machine okay so there are six different plugins that have been set up for uh, execution here out of six three have already been checked three would be in pending state where which would be checked in next 20 almost in next 30 seconds or so these plugins would be scheduled so actually what happens there is a script now uh, there are multiple scripts rather for each one of these check there is going to be a script and the script is executed based on that script uh, return type that just figures out what has to be shown here whether it is okay or whether it's critical whether it is a warning sign it also checks whether the servers are up and running depending on any of the service that you monitor to the, um, on them generally we use the ping service for checking whether the uh, node is flipping or uh, that means it is switching from on and off state or it's unstable it's uh, not online or something like that for that you'll have to add a file in Nagios that if you want to monitor any of the node you will have to tell Nagios that okay I need to monitor this node now um, go check it whether it is running or not all right so for adding that, very first we'll have to prepare the node for interacting with Nagios. How does the node know that Nagios is monitoring it? Okay, so now we are going to set up Nagios on the client side. Here, this is my fresh machine, Nagios client. okay on this box we are going to install some packages very first update the package list app get update 
and then we are going to install nrpe server here so nagios nrpe server and the scripts that we want to execute are present in a package called nagios plugins so these two packages have to be installed and we need to configure this client to talk to our nagios server so we'll have to tell where the nagios server actually is The central dogma on which all these systems are based is client server kind of architecture. If you uh, see the plugin setup as well, we have did the same thing. Install uh, Puppet and then on the client side, we have installed a server which talks to the Puppet Master. And then we have told the client where the Puppet Master actually is. So it goes and connects with that. Same thing here as well. So the package lists have been updated. And the package that we want to install is app get um, install nagios nrpe server and nagios plugin nagios nrpe server and nagios plugins it would be needing another uh, few minutes for installation so the setup is pretty much straightforward Okay, what we have done is we have simply installed Nagios package, added a user to, uh, added uh, actually Apache user to Nagios group, and then changed the permission of uh, slash etc slash Nagios 3 folder. And uh, after that, we have configured uh, Nagios to enable executing external commands. Now, on the client side, we are simply installing a package. After installation of the packages, we are going to tell Nagios where uh, the Nagios server is kept. So I'll have to change another file and we are set up uh, on the client side as well. Nothing much is required. Important part would be when you uh, configure uh, the stuff on Nagios server side and tell it that uh, you need to monitor this particular node. So you will need to write a small uh, configuration file for that. So you'll have to define a host, you'll have to define the services. So we have done installing packages. We are done with that. And the next thing we are going to do is telling it where Nagios is. So file name is at C Nagios NRPE dot CFG. We are configuring the NRPE server now. So here there would be a line called allowed hosts. Here it is. This is on line number 81. Okay, so along with localhost, you should also add the one which points to your Nagios server. It is 56.71 is my Nagios server IP address, so I would be adding that here. Go and save it and then restart the service for NRPE server. Nagios NRPE server start. Okay, so we have started the NRPE server now. If you're not sure whether you have done it right or not, you could also restart it and check uh, it again. All right, so once we are done here, we need to get back to the server side and tell server, that means Nagios server, that this client has been set up. You need to go and monitor such and such service on it. So here we have installed plugins, right? So plugins would be present at, um, not sure the path, let me check it. You share. Nagios plugins. It's not here. Mm. CD var lib.
here are the plugins so the path is user lip nigeus plugins uh, where all the plugins would be kept actually these plugins are scripts okay so for checking the disks or checking the ping response checking the ssh service checking the postgres service there are multiple checks which are written already and we are going to add our own custom check here okay so if you want to write a script uh, for your own purpose and you want to add it as an adjust plugin you should be placing it here at this location so we'll see that in a while but before that using these ex uh, internal commands which are present here in Nagios, we would be monitoring this particular node so for monitoring it let's get back to the Nagios server and configure it so i'm back to my Nagios machine okay so at the path which is at c nagios 3 conf.d we are going to place multiple files so it already has uh, a list of files which it is using for the configuration purposes so all the configurations that you are going to write for any of the host should be placed in this particular directory okay in nagios 4 these people have created another folder called servers where you would be placing all this uh, all this stuff but here for, for nigeos 3 uh, the things are a little bit primitive so you'll be placing all of these uh, monitoring configurations that you're going to write in the same folder called nigeos 3 slash control d uh, there are multiple files which are already present we are going to add our own let me show you the one that we are using already it's called localhost nigeos 2.cfg so if you see here a host is defined let me show you the line okay on line number seven the host is defined it says use the generic host template the host name should be localhost alias should be localhost address should be uh, 127.0.0.1 it's fine and the services that it wants to uh, set up that means these services are actually not the exact services that you have on the operating system these would be the scripts that you execute using the plugin executor so the first script that uh, these people have ex are executing is disk space and the check command is check all disks so check all disks should be present then there is another service that uh, is being monitored it is check users so the the user check is uh, being processed the total number of processes are also mentioned here uh, so 250 would be for warning 400 would be for critical and so on every uh, external command or script would be taking in some parameters if uh, the script writer has asked for and the way the parameters are passed are uh, again monitored by the script writer itself the way th these parameters are written like check process exclamation 250 exclamation 400 uh, the script writer whoever has written the check process script is asking for two parameters 250 and 400 to be coming in as first and second parameter the first parameter would be the warrant uh, warning parameter the second parameter would be the critical parameter if you have scripts which accept no parameters then you don't have to pass it okay and the last service that these people are using is for checking the load now what i am going to do is i'm going to use the similar syntax wherein uh, defining service you would be using generic service template host name should be present and service description whatever the service description is and the command that means which particular script you want to execute all right so let's do it our ways uh, we are going to add one more file i would call it as monitor underscore nigeos underscore client dot cfg again two blocks that i am going to place is host and service so let's define a host define host and use the generic template all right the host name nagios client dot example dot com alias is nagios client address where it is kept let me check the ip address there 
Najis current IP address in our case is 56.68. So I'm use, going to use it. 192.168.56.68. That's it. Done. So this is defining a host. But which particular service has to be monitored there or what plugins have to be installed, we'll have to define that as well. So the second block comes in define service. Okay, so I want to use whether ping is working. So I would say use instead of host this time, we are going to use generic service. And attach this service to the host name Nagios client. You could place any client here, but the standard is that we generally create one file per node that you want to monitor, and that file should be containing the node definition plus the scripts that are supposed to be executed on it. So here in this case, Nagios client example.com is the host name. Service description. So I would say it is check ping or just ping and the check command is check ping and the multiple uh, parameters that are supposed to be passed to it are 100.020% well uh, it means that if the ping time is 100 milliseconds in that case uh, it's 20% of the uh, total execution time that we need and that should be treated as a warning sign. If you get responses within 500 milliseconds, term it as a critical. Okay, and beyond that is again error. So this is the way uh, that the script writer has uh, demanded for the parameters. We would be writing our own script. Okay, so we'll see how to deal with this. Define. So let's first check whether this service has been implemented. So to check it, very first we are going to save this. All right, and do service nagios three restart. Okay, go back to nagios three. Check the hosts. You have another host listed here, nigerscline.example.com. It says the status of check is still pending. What about the services? Only one service is added for nigerscline.example.com, which is ping. Okay, so we would be adding a few more services here and check whether it works or not. If there are any problems with the scripts, any of the plugins that we have installed, and they are they fall in uh, warning or critical zones, then the problems section here on the left hand side would be showing you the listed problems okay so there are no problems uh, as such currently with any of our servers so let's do one thing add a few more scripts here or add a few more services which are already present on Nagios and then we'll be writing our own script so we'll see we have defined a service for checking ping. I'm going to define a service for checking SSH, whether SSH port is open here or not. So use generic service. Again, the host name where the service has to be attached. Nagios client dot example dot com service description I would say as such right check command now here there's a plugin called check as such which does not require any of uh, parameters to be passed so it is very simple either it is going to be up or it's going to be down right so the service is either present on port number 22 or it's not present on port number 22 
so that would be in the next service service Nigeria's restart go back to Nigeria's client and here it should add another service called SSH okay so ping is working SSH it would check whether it is working or not and then it will report us back all right um, so far so good we have we are known that how to set these things up so for chef recipes or puppet recipes that you want to write um, you will create templates generic host templates are there okay so similarly you would be creating a template for this file that we have simply uh, written now monitor underscore nagios underscore client okay and these uh, files are supposed to be generated according to the number of servers that you are going to monitor so let's say that the file is a template dot erb template in which you can replace the the names okay so what has to be replaced here host name host name values have to be replaced then the address value has to be replaced right and anything else which is present would be taking up the values from here so you'll have to just replace the host names and the ally uh, sorry host name allies and the address values in each one of these entries and it should act according to the different servers that you want to set up for the list of servers that you you have you would be creating uh, multiple templates and creating the files from that so we have seen uh, a file resource right we have also seen a template resource which would be picking up the uh, data from the template which we are going to place in the files section of puppet puppet module okay so let's do one thing if you're clear until now we are going to write our own script and before that we, we have uh, uh, already learned bash so we will be needing some information about it right some knowledge from that part as well so I told you what the scripts are they would be returning some uh, error codes either 0 1 2 3 and so on now I just understands first three error codes 0 means ok 1 means warning 2 means critical 3 and above it's all unknown and uh, Nagis would be throwing errors for that script should be present on the client side right so I don't need to place it on the server what I'll do is I'll write the script somewhere I will copy it on every client that I want the script to be running on okay so currently I have just one client so I would be writing my script directly there let's see how to write a script for writing a script you need to uh, write it in a place where all your scripts are present the existing scripts are present so the path was cd user lib nagios plugins here there were multiple plugins present we are going to add one more so i'm going to create a file called um, simply write a script for checking the disk space so i would say used space okay so this is going to be my file dot sh since it is a bash script right so use space dot sh here we are going to write a bash script for uh, showing us the used space so before i jump to writing code let's first find out which command would give us the use space so there is a command called df minus h free disk space and in human readable form minus h would give us some data okay we are more concerned about the slash which would be mounted as the biggest uh, mount point here at the very top line the first line size is 19 G used is 1.4 G available is 17 G and the total used percentage is 8 percent right so if this 8 percent actually falls in different categories maybe uh, we would be generating categories so from 0 to 50 so if it is from 0 to 50 uh, tell me that it's okay if it's from 50 to uh, 85 then in that case it would be warning if it is 85 onwards in that case it is critical okay so you decide your own um, sections or own limits that what is okay for you what is critical for you and what is uh, a warning sign for you it depends on business to business so how do I get the actual value just one single block so let's do it Mm, df minus h 
I would pass this information to a grep command where it would be grepping it vertically on a column called file system. What does it give us? Okay, so there's one single line that is present. Um, now, I want to get only the first, second, third, fourth, fifth column. So I would say AWK. AWK is a tool that helps us in uh, operating on the streams and the results. So I would say here that print me only the fifth column, which is dollar five. Right, so now we are getting only the fifth column. Now one more step, I just uh, want the number. Okay, so the first number here without the percent mark. Right, now we are getting just one line, which is 8% and I want that 8% without the percent sign. So we are going to get rid of percent. The command again, again I'm piping. So every time I use a pipe, I'm actually redirecting the output of the first command to the second one. The, uh, the second one would be using the output of first command as its own input. It would be processing it, providing it as output to the next one and so on so we have until now used one two three four commands and i'm going to use the fifth one for getting rid of the percent sign said is a stream editor where i'm going to change the stream um, if it has a percent sign to it replace it with nothing okay so the patterns are placed between the slashes just like in case of uh, puppet we did G means global. Does it give me a number? Yes. So now we have a number. I need to remember this command now and put it in a file. So how do I put it? I would rather enclose it in a string than do echo and then I would be moving it to a file which we have already created. The file name was used space.sh. Open up the file. Remember that I have uh, did a redirection here, just like in case of bash. Okay. So we need all the knowledge that we already have learned. Now here, this is the command, but I want the output of it stored in a particular variable. That's when uh, I would be using that variable for matching against various case, uh, test cases. So how do I do it? Like this. Right? The quotes. Uh, not actually the quotes, it's a backtick, backtick command. And then we would be using that output to be stored in a particular variable. So I will say used space is my variable where I'm supposed to be storing all this data. One step at a time, okay? We have not written the complete command. We have evolved it to uh, the perfect answer that we want. Okay, all set. Now we are going to check whether it falls in a particular uh, case or not. Case structure, start with case. Pass it a variable. Used space. Okay. And in now the various uh, values that you want to match it against. Very first value that I want to match it against is from 0 to 50. Right. From 0 to 50. and parenthesis for starting the block 
we would say echo everything is okay it's in double quotes not in single quotes so it would be uh, evaluated properly u space would be replaced by any number of percentage that uh, it is providing Right, so that's a nice message, but the return type is uh, required. So I would be returning it with return type zero. That means it's a success. What about the break statements? Two semicolons. Okay, from 51 onwards to 85. In this case, we would say it's a warning. used space percent of disk space used and this time i'm going to exit with a error code of one so these are the nagio standards we are not defining anything on our own zero means okay one means warning two means critical and anything apart from that nagio would be putting it as an error here from 85 onwards right for 86 200 percent echo that it's critical and the output that you'd be giving this uh, one-liner uh, it actually should be one-liner it shouldn't be a long uh, format. And this time exit with error code of two. Break it again. What about anything else? So if anything else comes in, then in that case, simply echo. unknown error and provide the use space here okay so this is not the correct answer so uh, please go and look into it so that's what it means exit with error code of three and get out of this case statement how do we end the case statement reverse case right ESAC okay so that's what my script would look like very simple script uh, simple case statement is there we are matching it against uh, the results of the df minus h command that we have received let me execute this uh, let's check it out it's um, bash use space.sh so currently it says uh, unknown should not say unknown there's something wrong here df minus h grep minus v file system uh, print oops print doesn't print anything so it should be percent five i'm not sure why it didn't show up sorry dollar five uh head is okay all right so let's see it again Nice. It says 8% uh, of this space used, but it's getting into the warning part. It's getting to warning because we are using a wrong uh, globing sign. So let me do one thing. It gets from zero. to
have to write some fancy regular expression here. The globing wouldn't help. Uh, what the globing is doing here is, let's say, if I write something like V star, that means it should start with V, end with any other numbers. So when we wrote to this, 0 to 50, it actually didn't mean a range. It means anything that starts with a 0 and uh, goes till 50 and is followed with a star. That means 8 also follows in the uh, same range, but here also it uh, falls, which is the second else condition. Let me do one thing. We'll uh, try to match it. I'm working on uh, a small set here. It's 51. So it should go beyond 60 to 80. And the second number should be from 0 to 9. to 80 should be a warning sign and after that it should be critical so I would say 81 onwards to 1 okay or to 9 uh, numbers from 0 to 9 are OK and it should also contain 100 then it's a critical sign let's try this out uh, I hope that works Nice. Uh, so 8% of disk space used and that's okay. Great. So just uh, wrote the script which gives us um, the use space percentage according to the different ranges. The first range is from 0 to 50, second range is from uh, 60 to 80, third range is from 80 onwards to 100. So what's next? We need to set up this script as our external command. Right? So for doing that, what I need to do is very first I need to add it in the NRP configuration. So on the client side itself, we need to modify a file called etc. Nagios nrp.cfg. We have already done that, right? On line number 85 or so, we have changed the allowed hosts here. 
right it's on line number 81 but i need to add one more command to it that would tell me uh, that such and such new command has been added okay so go to the end of the file find the section where there are written multiple commands it would be probably on line number 219 and onwards i am writing my own command here whatever command you want to issue so i would say it's a bash script um, so please have the command name as used space underscore bash remember the name that you are giving to it because the same name you'll have to call on the server side and the server will be giving a call to the client with the same name if this command is uh, requested by the server then execute this particular script so the script will be kept at user lib nagios plugins okay and our plugin name is used space dot sh does it require any uh, parameters no it does not go and save it so i have saved this one and restart the nrp service okay so you are done on the client side on the client side you need us a, a script to be present in the plugins folder and you need to configure that external script uh, here inside the nrp.cfg file now restart the service so that it picks up the new configuration nagios nrp e server restart if everything is okay should work right so we are done on the client side now again on the server side on the server side server doesn't know that such new script have been added okay for that you need to define a new command the path is etc nagios three and inside this there would be a file called commands.cfg etc nagios three commands.cfg is the file name here different commands are already written using the same syntax we need to define our own command now so define command Syntaxes command name give it a name Use space underscore bash remember the command name that you have given on the client side the same command name should be present here then command line Using the user that Nagios is uh, running with user one issue The command check NRPE on the host which is provided by the host address so these are the predefined variables here and execute the command used space underscore bash okay so user one slash check an rpe on the host host address dollar sign is required and execute a check called use space underscore bash so that's the new command that we have added the command name is going to be use space underscore bash so remember this command name again now while defining a service in your uh, particular host file so we have written a host configuration right host configuration was written in a file called monitor nagios client and here i'm going to define a new service now define a service use generic service host name is nagios client dot example dot com and service description disk space okay and the check command is the one that we have just write, uh, written it's used space underscore bash it does not accept any parameters so we are not passing any parameters here right so we are all set for testing our new uh, script using nagios so save this restart the service and here you should see another service added 
Azure's client. It says disk space is pending. It will check it. It will get back to us in next uh, one and a half minutes. So we'll wait for it. Okay. Uh, so that brings us to the end of the Nagio section. So we have set up Nagio server, set up Nagio's client, installed uh, the plugins. We have set our own plugin, set up the external commands, and executed that as a service here. So we should be able to see that in a minute or so that it refreshes itself and uh, gets uh, back the result. The result is going to be okay. We have already checked that manually on the client side by executing the script. <coughs> Another few seconds to go. Uh, I'll wait for it to finish. There's something wrong here. It says written code was 127. The plugin may be missing. A plugin is not found here. Let me check what's wrong. Use space dot okay. Uh, use space is not executable. I'll have to make it ex executable chmod plus x used space dot sh so now it is executable let me check the permissioning on it permissioning is okay all right so let's wait again for another check to happen and that should take care of it It actually waits for a minute before making another att attempt to it. Total in, uh, there would be four attempts made before notifying you of uh, the problem.
so there seems to be a small problem but i'm not fi- able to figure it out uh, shouldn't happen actually i'll give it another 5 minutes I'll wait for this to finish uh, it would again uh, check it in a few seconds there was a problem in the script itself uh, not in the uh, exact script the command dot cfg change that we have done there's one another problem that is coming up at least we are getting another error so we have fixed the previous one it says that it is unable to complete ssh handshake okay that seems right uh service nagios or just nrpe
this doesn't, doesn't seem to be a problem here um, but apparently it's not working all right so let's do one thing i'll try to figure out what the problem here is okay and get back to you in the tomorrow's class tomorrow once we uh, get this problem resolved we would be um, having another topic at our um, discussion the topic is going to be about um, tuning parameters on network cpu memory and disk what are the different tuning parameters what are uh, the behaviors of the system and how to uh, predict or figure out what particular part of your network is in problem and try to fix it okay so there could be a problem um, because of the network condition but you would be uh, looking at the databases for that you might see that the database is down you are not able to connect to it there could be some another problem instead of just looking for the database services okay so how to figure out uh, the different uh, levels of problems that is what we are going to learn in tomorrow's class plus we are also going to uh, cover a part called ip address sorry not ip addresses um, ip tables it's a kind of firewall we will set up the firewall and convert our systems into black box for production ready environment so that is going to be for tomorrow's uh, I'll fix this disk uh, space problem that means uh, uh, um, the plugin problem here and get back to you that what actually the problem was <clears throat> okay so till then have a great day ahead uh, if you have any queries doubts you can ask it now or we'll meet again in the uh, class tomorrow at the same time